mystical creature. Everybody is sitting around the kitchen table as they wait for your explanation. Linking your fingers together as you rest your head on top of your hands in a serious thinking pose you start by asking a simple question. Are you geese monsters? They look as if they weren't expecting that question, before nodding. So that confirms your theory. Okay well that explains some things then. What does that mean? Ask Mars from across the table. It means that you're probably unaware that there are three types of sentient beings in the world. Three types of sentient beings, Dust repeats raising a bone brow in surprise. You nod your head as you continue your explanation. Yes. Humans, monsters, and mystical creatures, also known as mystics. You place your hand on your chest, I am a mystic skeleton. The room is silent once again before Jupiter speaks. Why so that means there's a whole another race that no one knows about, he exclaims in excitement. Wait mystical creature? You mean like the humans mythical creatures? Asks Mars with rapid interest as he sits a bit straighter. Yes, although we prefer the term mystical since we are very much real. I have much that I could tell you but for now I'll just stick to the basics, so I don't overwhelm you. They nod their heads and you continue. Mystics can be broken down into groups based on our subspecies. For example, my species is a mystic, but my subspecies is a skeleton. Some other species have different types or classes within their subspecies like fairies. Fairy is the subspecies but underneath that they have types such as nature fairies, animal fairies, tooth fairies, dream fairies, and so on. You can feel the table begin to shake as Jupiter's bones begin to rattle loudly. Looking in his direction you can see that his eye sockets have expanded and have multiple tiny stars in them. It looks like he's trying to hold back his excitement until you're done with your story, so you quickly continue. But we can get into details about those later. As for mystic skeletons, there seems to be some big differences between us and monster skeletons. Like? Well as you can probably guess just from looking at me, but mystic skeletons don't have eye lights or a magic field in our eyes. Magic field? Yes, depending on the lighting in the room, if you look in my eye sockets you can see the back of my skull. Gasp. Really? Papyrus leans over the table and looks you in the eye sockets. His sockets widen even more as he returns to his seat. She's right I can see the inside of her skull completely. It is actually quite unnerving. Dust gently grabs your skull and turns your skull slightly so, you are looking him in the eye sockets. You really can see back there, he says releasing your skull. Yup. Compared to your eye sockets, where no matter the amount of light, I still can't see the inside of your skulls. Also. Our bone structure is very similar to a human skeleton whereas yours seems to resemble them but some of your features are rather exaggerated. You aren't actually a human skeleton, are you? Dust tasks while snickering, although his expression tells you that he's only partially joking. With a slight pout you calmly explain that no, you are not an actual human skeleton, but a naturally born mystic skeleton that just so happens to look like a human skeleton. So human skeletons can't come back to life? Well technically no, although they can be used as puppets but no after a human dies, they stay dead unless they turn into a ghost or vengeful spirits. You didn't actually mean to sign that last part, although you think that bit of information is common knowledge, it could still be unnerving to some. The room seems to get a bit colder as everyone seems to tense up their expressions turning somber, like they're remembering something they'd rather forget. Anyway. You sign with a clap of your hands noticing that Dust has yet to eat his food. Our bones are made of collagen, calcium, marrow, and other minerals. Our bodies consist of both fused and individual bones which are supported and held together by magic. Humans hold their bones in place with the help of ligaments, tendons, and such. So, we don't have any of the flesh and organs that one needs to eat or that weird magic field that you guys have. Which means we don't do most typical bodily functions like, eating, breathing, sweating, or dot expelling waste. 
You shudder at the thought of that last notion. Yug. So dot why you really can apostrophe t dot eat. T that's so sad. You will never get to taste the excellence of my cooking. Jupiter exclaims. Well if it means anything to you it looks and smells delicious, you say as you eye the food in front of you. Well presentation is just as important as how the food tastes, so I will accept your compliment. Your bones begin to rattle gently due to your laughter, that only Ember can hear, as you bring your hand to cover your mouth. You always feel a little self-conscious about laughing in front of others since your face is stoic, and people without telepathy can't hear it. After you manage to collect yourself from your laughter you notice that they are staring at you with an indescribable expression, although the colored dust is back. Is that something that's in the air? Is it on my face too? I'm sorry about that I know it's weird when I laugh. No. No. You have dot a very cute laugh. Ember says from his end of the table between Jupiter and dust. Dot thanks. I forgot you could hear it, but for the others it must have looked weird. Absolutely not. You dot were very cute. If it was possible, you were sure that steam would be floating from your skull. You have been complimented before, sure, but not about your laugh. Hey kid, you alright? Mars asks looking concerned. Quickly you bring your hands in front of your chest waving them frantically in an I'm okay don't worry about it motion. Yeah I'm fine, totally fine. Mars tilts his head in confusion and Jupiter seems to be more concerned than before. Oh, right sorry. Forgot you guy don't have telepathy. You sign awkwardly. Telepathy? Mars asks more so to himself than to you, but before you can respond you notice dust heating out of the corner of your socket. Almost immorally fast you turn your head to look at the eating skeleton. The spaghetti slips between his teeth with ease as it seems to disappear once inside his mouth. He dips his fork into the spaghetti as he twirls the noodles around the fork, before bringing it up to his mouth slowly opening his mouth to reveal a swirling black void that lies behind his teeth. As the fork enters his mouth the noodles start to unravel and disappear into the darkness. He closes his mouth around the fork and slides it out as the last few remaining strains of noodles slip past his clenched teeth. Hey! What's wrong pal? Never seen a skeleton eat before. Dust tasks with an impossible smug grin on his face. All you can do is shake your head in wonder. You've seen other people eat before but never a skeleton. He slowly brings his sauce-covered thumb to his teeth as he maintains eye socket contact with you. In one swift motion the sauce has disappeared from his thumb as if it was instantaneously sucked into his mouth. Even though his mouth was closed. You never knew watching a skeleton eat could be so dot fascinating. Sans. Dust. The sudden shouting from Papyrus and Demba drew you out of your trance. Realizing how close you are to him you quickly scout away from him. Hands on your cheekbones as your bones rattle nervously at the embarrassing development. Ember and Jupiter are busy lecturing Dust about proper eating etiquette and telling him that he should be ashamed of his recent behavior, and in front of a guest no less. However, instead of looking remorseful he continues to eat with a satisfied grin. Mars clears his non-existence throat so, if you don't eat how do you get energy? Happy for a distraction from your current embarrassment you gladly answer his question. Yes. I know most species and living organisms get their energy and nutrients via eating or absorbing food. Like most living things we gain our energy and nutrients through sleeping. Sleeping that's such a lazy way of gaining energy? I suppose so. We sleep in the ground so you get cut off by the sudden gasps and shocked expression of the others. What? Why you sleep in the ground? T that seems awfully uncomfortable. Ember nods his head in agreement while Dust and Mars seem too dumbfounded to properly form words. Yes, we sleep in the ground. The ground is full of a lot of minerals and nutrients that are good for the bones. While we sleep our bodies absorb these nutrients replenishing our energy and healing any minor wounds or injuries we may have sustained. 
There's a moment of silence as they take in everything that you've said. It was a lot and there is still a lot that you can explain on, not just about mystic skeletons but mystics in general but maybe we'll leave that for another day. Your hands are starting to hurt from signing so much. All right, all right. I think I covered the basics if you guys have any specific question you want to ask I'll be happy to answer them for you. Jupiter immediately shoots his hands up and waves it frantically, waiting for you to call on him. Yes, Papyrus. You sign with a silent chuckle. Why do you not want to wear clothes? Everyone looks at you with intense focus. I guess this is the question that has been plaguing their minds since I got here, although I forgot about it. Well there isn't really a rhyme or reason for it, we just don't wear clothes. Similar to how animals are natural, some of us mystic remain in our natural state as well. I'm sure you have some monsters that prefer to be natural rather than wear clothes? You ask, hopeful that they'll accept this explanation because there really isn't any other reason for it. They all seem to think about it for a moment. Dust and Mars nod their heads in agreement as Jupiter speaks. Come to think of it you are correct, tiny skeleton. There are a handful of monsters that do prefer to be naked, he explains. Honestly, I would prefer to remain natural myself, but it won't kill me to wear clothes either. So, while I'm here I'll respect the fact that you all wear these clothes and wear them as well. I guess this is one of those when in Rome do as the Romans do. You don't have to do that for us you know. It would be rude to have our guest be uncomfortable, right paps? Dust asks with a knowing smile. Mars visibly tenses as that strange navy blue dust covers his cheekbones again. Jupiter sits up straighter as his eyes begin to shift rapidly from side to side as he stutters trying to find the right words. W well. Why yes it would be our rude of us to have her be you uncomfortable be but. Jupiter continues to stutter, lost at what to say, as you lean over the table and reach out to grab Mars' face. He flinches at your touch as his eye sockets widen and his eye lights shrinks. The weird dusting on his face deepens as you rub your thumb over his cheekbone, trying to wipe it off. It won't come off but it keeps getting darker in color turning to a very lovely shade of navy blue. You bring your other hand up to cup his other cheek leaving you in an awkward position as you continue to stroke his cheekbones and a bit of his jaw. His eye sockets begin to lid, and you hear a soft purring sound which catches you off guard. Before you can ask what, he's doing Jupiter interrupts by coughing into his fist. Mars instantly disappears from you grasp causing you to hit the table face first. Dust starts laughing from behind you and looking up you can see that Jupiter has that same light orange dust on his cheekbones. Sorry to interrupt your canoodling but it is inappropriate to display such behavior at the dinner table. Sorry? What's canoodling? Letting out a heavy sigh I tease fine as long as you understand. He gets up from the table and takes Dust's empty plate away and starts washing it in the sink. Dust is still laughing, hunched over while gripping the edge of the table. You're still confused by the sudden change in mood but you have more important matters to discuss. Hey what's that weird colored dust that everyone keeps getting? Colored dot dust? Yeah that color stuff that keeps appearing on everyone's cheekbones. Dust's is purple. Jupiter's is a light orange, Mars is navy blue. The look of realization crosses his features as he understands what you're talking about. Oh, you mean blushing? Dust's laughter starts to die down while Jupiter dries the dishes and puts away the leftover food. It's quite in the kitchen since no one can hear your conversation, although Dust can hear at least half of it. Blushing? You mean that thing people with blood do? He nods his head in confirmation before further explaining. Yes, monsters blush as similarly to humans dot but instead of blood it's our magic. So that color on their cheeks is the color of their magic showing through? Correct. Bring a hand over your mouth in a shocked surprise scandalous, is all you can say. What you're thinking about kid dust task halfway hidden by the refrigerator door as he pulls out two bottles of dot ketchup? 
just thinking about you guys, we don't really know a lot about monsters. And despite being skeletons, you can blush and your faces are quite malleable. You can make all kinds of different facial expressions. I can't make any facial expressions. Everyone was heading to the living room as you were signing which made things a bit awkward since they had to angle their bodies to still be able to see you. See this is why having telepathy would be so helpful. Don't I have something for that? Mars was sitting on the couch watching TV while everyone entered the living room. While you were lost in your thoughts about the content of your bag, Jupiter was filling Mars in on what you had signed while Dust gave him one of the bottles of ketchup. Soon all four of them looked at you with a mixture of amusement and confusion. What? You can't? You shake your head nope. But, you're pretty expressive, says Dust. I am? You ask with a tilt of your head, resting one finger on your chin. You always imagined that you look expressionless or neutral faced, since you can't smile or frown. Yeah, you have this aura around you that perfectly matches how you feel. Mars starts to explain. Aura what? No paps. Not aura, aura. I know Sans, but aura what? Damn it paps do we really have to do this now? He complains just barely over a whisper. So, I have an aura? Yeah, it's like the space around you changes shapes and colors to match whatever you're feeling. It makes you look animated even though your facial features don't change. Explains Dust as he continues to study you. You look at the space around you and wave your arms a bit. Obviously, you don't see what they do so you shrug your shoulders and head for the couch. Plopping down on the other end away from Mars. Dust sits on the armrest next to you, leaning his arm against the back of the couch. Ember floats to be between you and Dust except he's in front of you and closer to the floor. Jupiter takes his seat in the middle of the couch between you and Mars. However, as Jupiter sits down you notice that Mars is dot drinking dot ketchup. Utterly confused you leaning forward to stare at him watching as he brings the tip of the ketchup bottle to his teeth before slowly parting his jaw to reveal his rather impressive canines and premolars. He gently bit down on the tip of the bottle as he squirted the ketchup into his mouth, tilting his head back slightly as he looks at you through his lidded good eye, a teasing smirk gracing his features. Your bones start to rattle a little bit as you quickly look away in favor of watching whatever was on TV. You could hear Mars quietly chuckling to himself from the other end of the couch. You spend the next couple of hours watching whatever is on TV while trying to resist the urge to stare at Dust and Mars every time they take a sip from their ketchup. You let your hands rest for a bit, perfectly comfortable with sitting in silence while the other three talked occasionally. Sometimes you would talk to Ember telepathically. It was surprisingly relaxing and comfortable like you had been friends with them for years. You feel a sense of calmness overtake you and debate on asking questions of your own, but all the traveling, talking, and explanation certainly has tired you out. Sometime during the night Jupiter excused himself saying good night tiny skeleton, and I do hope that you find our ground to be quite comfortable before rushing off to bed. There wasn't anything good on TV. You weren't even sure if the two skeletons were watching TV, but you started to doze off. It was probably around 5 in the morning when you started to awaken. Noticing that you are now sighted between dust and Mars, with your head resting on Mars' shoulder. You slowly get up trying not to wake the other two as you find your way to the back door and quietly exit to the backyard. You lay on your back in the soft grass and enjoy the stars in the sky knowing that in a couple of hours it'll be hidden away by the brightness of the sun. Watching the stars twinkle and fade away behind a thin veil of clouds you think back to the night you've just had. You were just supposed to get some monster food but now you managed to meet some monster skeletons and maybe Dot became their friend? Wait. Should I have told them about mystics? Mystics and monster interactions is still in a grey area after all. A. Eh? I'm sure it'll be fine, you think to yourself as you begin to sink into the ground for a good day's rest.
I'm glad you enjoyed that video slash gameplay. Just remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Until next time, goodbye!